The founders of D&D not only changed the game industry, they changed pop culture. I spoke with Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford about the impact of D&D. In terms of game design, I mean, obviously, any game that uses levels owes a huge debt to essentially what I think of as the big breakthrough of Dungeons & Dragons. There are two. The first one being a game that really isn't a game. It's more a framework for a shared narrative. And this idea that you have a character who will change by through success in the game, the scenario the, or the story or whatever that's put in front of you, if you succeed, you gain something from that for your character that carries over to the next game. Uh, and I don't think a game had ever done that before. Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson and their group of friends who helped develop D&D originally, it really was in many ways one of those lightning strikes in popular culture where this thing arose, this tabletop role-playing game, where there really was nothing like it before. Elements of it certainly existed before. All of us have played make-believe without needing rules to do so. And as far as we can tell, humans have played make-believe as long as the species has been around. So that D&D certainly didn't make up make-believe. Early D&D often used miniatures and uh, had a grid that came from wargaming. So D&D didn't invent that either. I think it really comes from this fusion he had of being such a creative person, being such a storyteller, and then being having a mind for war games at the time of you know we, games that, that simulated historical battles or theoretical battles in the future. You know, uh, this is the '60s, the '70s, where the Cold War is you know, in full swing. And so I think he was really the first person to bring those two things together, to say rather than just rely on history as our guide point, right? Rather than going back and saying, well, you know, what was the effectiveness of a T-72 tank versus different weapons that NATO might fire at it, and say, well, let's set aside his history books and let's instead grab Fritz Leiber's short stories and say, that's our reference book. Now, what kind of reality would we build from that? And it's just amazing to think that's essentially what the, the mashup he did was take a wargaming approach to creating a, a fictional reality, a, a reality space that your game's gonna take place in, and then what are the rules of this reality? Because when you think of games up to that point, until war games were invented, I think it was Charles Roberts who really kind of created the first modern war game. Um, war games were just the tools for teaching military officers. Games people played were typically uh, abstract, like chess, right? They, they weren't trying to capture rea a reality. It was an abstract version of reality. And so bringing those two things together, I mean, that's enormous. That, that's modern gaming. But it was the fusion of those elements, along with the world building and the creation of various pantheons, all of that, all of that coming together, that alchemy, that's the special thing that Gary and Dave and the other founders of D&D did. It, it's like they, they mixed these elements up in a cauldron, and I'm not even sure they knew really how special this thing was when they first did it. Uh, because it, I mean, of course, fairly on, early on when it, when it became popular and started spreading like wildfire, well, then they certainly saw some, something special uh, was happening. But I get the feeling that early on there was just, you know, they were like so many of us experimenting with something that appealed to them. And then the, you know, the experiment led from one thing to the next and suddenly we have this game that we're playing over 40 years later. I met Gary, uh, I had one time I met him beyond just seeing him at the game convention. And that was back in, I think it was 2003, the uh, since closed Higgins Armory Museum in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, hosted an event where Gary came in and gave a lecture on medieval weaponry. And I think maybe it may even have been focused on pole arms, which if you're not familiar with the early days of D&D, &D, uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons was infamous for the extensive catalog of all the different types of long pointy weapons that, that medieval Europeans used at one time or another. And so there was this lecture you could pay to go to. Um, I, being cheap, didn't want to pay for the lecture, but there was a free book signing that took place afterward. And so I got to meet him there. 
And I think what happened was if you were a big D&D fan, you paid for the lecture and you got like an entire day to hang out with Gary and ask him questions and talk about, you know, games and medieval weapons. And so when we showed up for the book signing, there's nobody there for like the first 30 minutes. Because I think, like I said, if you really wanted to show up, if you're the type of person like me who would show up early to get there like just as it starts, you probably just went the whole hog and paid probably like whatever the nominal fee to go to the lecture. Um, so my friends and I had a chance to just kind of chat with him for a while. And it was really cool. He was very, like, in a lot of ways, when I think of how I try to interact with gamers today, I try to think of that afternoon where he put up with us, he answered all our questions, he was very gracious, he signed all our products, and he really took the time to try to give us thoughtful answers to the questions we had. And we asked him a bunch of questions about why did it work this way in AD&D and stuff. So he was very patient with us. Uh, I know from years ago when I met both Dave and Gary, even when they had moved on, they no longer were at TSR, they were no longer working officially on D&D. When I talked with both of them, uh, which was a great, great honor to be able to do so uh, years ago, it was clear that D&D still had a special place in their hearts. Uh, even though they had moved on, uh, they knew still this, this game was momentous. Uh, and again, that's something we take seriously all these years later, that this is a very special thing. It inspires other role-playing games to this day. It inspires computer games, board games, and so forth. That creative fire that, that occurred all those years ago, it's still blazing. Thank you, Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford for talking about the impact of d and I'm Todd Kendrick, your host. Thank you for watching.